Uh, I'm actually very excited to uh, talk about the module that's coming up April 11th to 13th in Orlando because it is something that sort of evolved to become apparent to us as a need for anti-aging physicians and our aesthetic fellows. I'm the director of the Aesthetic Anti-Aging uh, Fellowship for the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and I'm also the director of Ageless Aesthetic Institute and Ageless Regenerative Institute, where we have trained physicians to do aesthetic, cosmetic, and regenerative procedures. So why treat dermatologic conditions? And for those of you who are aesthetic fellows, you know that we work on the skin every day, and it's imperative that we can di accurately diagnose and treat and improve the quality of our patient's skin because healthy skin is beautiful skin. For those of us who also practice anti-aging, we have an aging population. We treat an aging population. And um, many of these uh, skin conditions are becoming more prevalent with our toxic environment and aging population, and also the difficulty getting, getting into a standard dermatology practice. And if you look here, the average wait times for non-emergencies are three to six months. Average wait time for emergencies are six to eight weeks. Um, it's also interesting that you can probably get a Botox appointment that day. Uh, so that what it leaves is a very underserved market with dermatologic conditions. And if you are in aesthetics and anti-aging, your patients will greatly appreciate you developing some expertise and some skill in accurately diagnosing and managing these conditions. The revenue sources for doing so, um, just to justify you investing your time and adding these procedures to your practices, are roughly as follows. And of course, this will vary depending on where you're located in the U.S. and the, um, the demographic that you serve. But quick biopsies and cryotherapies are between $80 and $150. Laser treatments run $400 to roughly $1,000 for the treatments of dermatologic conditions. Um, laser therapy, if you want to sell home use devices, these are marked up approximately 100%. And the direct dispensing of cosmeceuticals and nutraceuticals within the practice, we also mark these up 100%. So it depends on your uh, patient volume what that revenue stream will look like. The baby boomer skin conditions that we're presented with on a daily basis in our practice are um, of course, photo aging with volume loss, loss of elasticity as we lose collagen and elastin in our skin, and we have uh, volume loss from underlying bone and subcutaneous tissue, pigmented lesions uh, due to the um, accumulation of photo injury over time or trauma, um, benign growth and lesions, uh, hair loss whether it's um, just male pattern baldness uh, or alopecia, could be zoster, fungal infections of the skin and nails, contact dermatitis, skin infections, actinic keratosis, skin cancers, and acne. Also, eczema, um, and as we have more and more toxic chemicals that we're exposed to and our inflammatory uh, balance is um, made to be more pro-inflammatory due to our uh, imbalance of our fatty acids. Um, causes things like eczema, atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, and then again, the infections that we're asked to look at and treat. And this is even if you're doing cosmetic laser procedures, it's imperative that you're able to diagnose these conditions accurately because it can change your results or it can just simply give you the opportunity to take better care of your patients and offer them you know, state-of-the-art therapies. Connective tissue diseases are becoming more and more prevalent. 
And we as anti-aging physicians certainly see a large number of these people because of our expertise in functional medicine. Um, and so to be able to treat the dermatologic presentations uh, is very helpful for your patients. Cutaneous vascular disorders, rosacea, hair loss, hirsutism, and hypertrichosis. So these are things that we will address in depth and in detail with presentation, education about the conditions, and then also treatments of the varying conditions using uh, topicals, oral supplementation, nutraceuticals, hormones, and then our laser and light therapies and chemical peels. To give an example of some of the conditions, eczema is now affecting 31 million patients in the U.S. 15 to 25 percent of all dermatologic patients suffer from eczema. Um, eczema actually describes many different types of uh, dermatitis, including atopic dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis, and seborrheic dermatitis. And the treatment options are topical steroids, immunomodulators, uh, education about food and irritant avoidance or toxin avoidance, antibiotics are sometimes employed. And then what we currently use a great deal of in our clinic are uh, high-quality omega-3 fatty acids. So, psoriasis um, affects 7.5 million Americans, and the direct costs associated with this treatment are estimated to be $1.2 billion. The treatment options here are, again, the corticosteroids, which ultimately cause damage to the skin barrier, cause thinning of the skin, and cause the same sort of catabolic effect that it, that it causes in joints and other tendons, ligaments, where we attempt to use it. Uh, vitamin D analogs are somewhat successful in anthralin. Light therapies, including um, PUBA and eczema pulse dye lasers, and then oral injected uh, biologics and um, methotrexate, cyclosporin, and hydroxyurea. And again, we've had very, very good success with high-quality, potent uh, fatty acids. So with all of these conditions, I'm assuming because we are anti-aging physicians that we will look at hormone balance, gut health, um, exposure to toxins, and optimize all of these things because that's what we're good at, that's what we do. And then in addition, the treatment of the dermatologic presentation um, is so appreciated by your patients because that's what they see. Herpes simplex, um, 500,000 new cases per year, 30 million Americans currently have this virus, and it's treated with antivirals, preventive strategies, and we can also address it with our nutritional therapies, uh, amino acids in particular. Reactive skin disorders, most common adverse reactions to drug therapies, and these are urticarial reactions or uh, fixed uh, cutaneous reactions. So certain drug classes have drug reaction rates of 1 to 5 percent, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, antibiotics, and anti-epileptic drugs. Treatment options here would include um, H1 uh, receptor antagonists, antihistamines, tricyclic antidepressants, glucocorticoids, H2 receptor antagonists, and again, in addition to this, and we will go through this in the module, we have to first optimize our hormone balance, gut health, inflammatory balance uh, with the supplement of uh, fatty acid. Connective tissue disorders, becoming far more common in our population due to overuse of antibiotics, exposure to toxins, leaky gut syndrome, and common disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Sjogren's syndrome, and vasculitis. All of these do have dermatologic presentations, and uh, they do, they're multi-system disorders. But again, I see patients in my practice every day that even if their disease is controlled, sometimes they're left with disfiguring um, cutaneous presentations, and these can be socially disabling, embarrassing, and patients are very grateful if you're willing as a physician to develop time and expertise in managing 
again, what they see. Lupus treatment options, um, and this will depend on the patient's presentation, obviously. Uh, we sometimes use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents to manage the, um, the arthritic symptoms. Um, I typically would go to omega-3s first, anti-malarial drugs, corticosteroids, immunosuppressants, lifestyle uh, act changes, including prevention of exposure to um, irritants or toxins, and a balancing gut health with probiotics and um, improving nutritional intake, and then DHEA, flaxseed oil, omega-3 fatty acids. I use Omeprim, which is green lip muscle oil, and then vitamin D uh, is also helpful. Acne, caused by uh, many different factors, but three of the most important factors are overproduction of oil by enlarged glands, and this is really increasing in our um, adult female and adult male population um, in because of the hormonal imbalances that occur with andropause and menopause. And when you do testosterone replacement in your patients, sometimes you can have uh, overproduction of oil by the pilosebaceous glands. Um, and so being able to manage acne becomes very important. We, we balance hormones, we prevent uh, overproduction of dihydrotestosterone, and then we have to be good at treating this topically as well. Um, the hair follicles become blocked, and we get overgrowth of uh, actually many different types of, of bacteria, but P. acnes is uh, the most prevalent. So this is the most common skin disorder in the U.S. that affects 40 to 50 million patients. 85% of all of our patients have acne at some point in their life, or actually 85% of all humans have acne at some point in their life. And it's socially embarrassing, um, it is inhibiting, and um, your patients are very, very grateful with help. Uh, and if you doubt this, you, I mean, if you cannot turn on the television without seeing, I don't think, a proactive commercial. Um, acne treatment options in our clinic um, we do use some topicals uh, to control significant presentations, and we'll go through all of these, um, including benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, the retinols. Um, a newer thought is actually to repair the skin barrier by improving hydration, repairing the lipid barrier, and repairing the stratum corneum so that there is a healthier microenvironment and that does not uh, create the inflammatory imbalance that allows the acne to occur. So that coupled with all of the things that we do as anti-aging physicians goes a long way to controlling the acne in a more nurturing fashion. Uh, systemically we do you know, have to use antibiotics sometimes, although we try uh, not to, and uh, Accutane or isotretinoin is sometimes used, although quite honestly with um, improving gut health, hormone balance, and topical treatments, we are able to control uh, our patients without the use of antibiotics and uh, Accutane. Light-based treatments, uh, including pneumatics and broadband light, uh, are oftentimes employed. This actually uh, creates a vacuum effect on the infected um, acne and helps to um, unclog the uh, plugged acne or the uh, pilosebaceous duct. Um, other strategies are photodynamic therapy, which we've had wonderful success with, and this is combining a photosensitizing agent with a light therapy to actually shrink down the pilosebaceous gland and put people in remission for uh, years at a time, or usually past the hormonal imbalance uh, that's, that's driving 
uh, the acne. Rosacea, another very um, prevalent condition. It's characterized by persistent uh, red cheeks, erythema on the cheeks and nose. It has uh, telangiectatic features, uh, flushing, and then also can have papules and pustules. It occurs most often in uh, light-skinned women, ages 30 to 50, and approximately 14 million Americans have this. And again, this is very socially embarrassing. Patients uh, are oftentimes accused of imbibing alcohol uh, when they do not, uh, in fact, do so. And it is, again, um, again just socially embarrassing. In, when they do studies and they pull our patients and ask them to place a value on clear skin, it's very high. Um, clear skin is actually valued in our society uh, at a higher value than money. Rosacea treatment options include uh, topical metronidazole, Retin-A, azelaic acid. Um, there are antibiotics which are employed in this. Again, we will share with you how to utilize photodynamic therapy and uh, we will review the um, balancing the pro-inflammatory state uh, through avoidance of irritants, improvement of nutrition, and then the use of you know balancing the omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. Male hair loss um, is very prevalent. It affects roughly 35 million men in the United States. And this is a very uh, important uh, condition to be able to treat because when men start losing hair, it does affect their self-esteem, it affects their productivity, and those things affect their functionality. So 40% of all men will have noticeable hair loss by age 35. Female pattern hair loss has become more and more noted as a condition. It's less obvious. Um, in its presentation because men lose hair in either the temporal area or the crown, whereas females lose hair globally. And so even though it, women can lose 65% uh, of women will have noticeable hair loss by age 60, and this affects 21 million women throughout the U.S. And we will treat, we will review all of the different options for treating these conditions, including accurate diagnosis, the topical and oral treatments that are available, as well as evaluation for uh, hair restoration procedures and light therapies. So the impact of hair loss, people feel prematurely aged, which is you know, the opposite of we want our patients to feel. Uh, they're socially embarrassed, they endure emotional distress, body image is uh, less satisfactory, less self-esteem, and less self-confidence. And we will review all of the different uh, state-of-the-art options available for hair uh, restoration and medical hair treatment. Pigmentation disorders, very prevalent. Um, we can either uh, see hypopigmentation or hyperpigmentation. Common conditions are melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, vitiligo, post-inflammatory hypopigmentation. And the treatment options that we will review will be first accurate diagnosis, laser and light therapies designed to repigment or to treat hyperpigmentation, topical preparations uh, which can prevent the melanocyte from producing more melanin or also help with repigmentation, uh, hormone balancing, and again the omega-3 fatty acids. Actinic keratosis, um, these are precancerous pre skin conditions and with our aging population are becoming far more prevalent. One in six Americans will develop actinic keratosis in their lifetime. Patients with actinic keratosis have a 5 to 9% lifetime risk of developing squamous cell carcinoma, which is you know, a far more serious condition. 
Older patients are more likely to develop AK due, due to the accumulative sun exposure over time. And we will review um, all of the different ways to treat actinic keratosis. We have as a bias uh, in our clinic that we like photodynamic therapy and we also are working uh, with some new dermatologic products that repair the skin barrier and are getting clearance with actinic keratosis and we're very excited to share that research with you. Uh, melanoma, we'll talk about the diagnosis of melanoma and one in five Americans develop melanoma in their lifetime, which is staggering. One American dies from melanoma every hour with uh, tanning beds and the change in the uh, atmosphere. We have seen an increase uh, in the risk of melanoma. And this is a cancer of younger patients. Uh, oftentimes we see this in our patients in their 40s and 50s. And it is critically important, particularly if you are practicing hormonal therapies or aesthetic therapies, that you are able to diagnose this accurately. So we'll be teaching dermoscopy and uh, biopsy um, procedures and skills um, to help manage these patients better. The effect of hormones on the skin, we as a group should be uh, highly um, educated in this regard, but the skin is considered an endocrine organ. It possesses endocrine properties. I think we're all familiar with its um, biologic effect in vitamin D, but it, it is far more than that. There's also expression and function of hormone receptors. It's involved in hormone synthesis beyond just vitamin D, metabolism, activation, inactivation, and elimination of the different hormones, and the biologic activity and release of hormones into the circulation. The hormones exerting the biologic effects on the skin are listed here and they will be reviewed in detail as to their effect on the skin uh, in, the, in the module. And growth hormone, uh, the sex steroids, glucocorticoids, retinoids, vitamin D, melatonin, and serotonin. To give an example, the effects of estrogen on skin, estrogen modulates epidermal keratinocytes dermal fibroblasts controlling the production of elastin and collagen and glucosaminoglycans causing the or causing the hydrated luxurious thicker healthier younger skin um, it controls the effect of melanocytes where we see women uh, develop um, melasma with either birth control therapies or pregnancy or uh, hormone replacement therapy. Um, protection, it provides protection against skin wrinkling and we do see increased wrinkling in menopause as the estrogen declines and we have loss of the effects uh, that it provides and it does also maintain skin firmness and skin thickness. So all of the hormones will be reviewed and the their biologic effect and their use in clinical uh, therapies will also be evaluated and reviewed. Sun protection, um, we can't really talk about dermatologic conditions without talking about sun protection. When you're doing any sort of treatments in your practice, it's you know, critical to uh, protect your patients against side effects and adverse events uh, and also to maintain their clinical benefit from their therapies. I am uh, in favor of using sun blocks, which reflect sun away from the skin's surface or ultraviolet. And then we'll also review all the different sun blocks available, when and how they should be used, along with the FDA-approved sunscreens, which actually absorb ultraviolet light. Every patient in your practice can benefit from sun protection. Um, it is easy to dispense in your practice, and it is also a very important that your patients hear you say, 
that they can protect their skin and have healthier skin if they protect the barrier, maintain good nutrition so that they have hydrated, hormonally balanced skin, and then protect it from ultraviolet damage. Now, if you've done all of the things that we said before, they will be more resistant to DNA damage from their uh, ultraviolet light. They'll be more resistant to photoaging uh, by virtue of having healthy skin, but still uh, sun protection is necessary. The effects of toxins on skin. Um, the toxins uh, are something that we've become quite interested in you know, over the last, I guess it would be five years or so. And the effects of toxins on our patient's skin uh, just simply can't be ignored. We are applying uh, many different products to our skin. They're effectively absorbed through the skin. And um, we really need to help educate our patients about the, the risks associated with this. Toxins are found in most cosmetics, skincare products, and personal care products. Women use 6 to 13 products uh, for personal care and apply them directly to their skin. And they have, uh, they create a lot of the atopic dermatitis that we see. They they can cause endocrine disruption, which we will review. And we'll, we'll review the common toxins that are found in shampoos, cosmetic products, lotions, soaps, and so on, so that we can help to guide our patients toward uh, more informed choices in their products and the risks uh, associated with long-term application of these products. Again. Um, there's lead in lipstick, and uh, it has been reported that an average woman consumes about six and a half pounds of lipstick per year. And this, you know, lead is obviously a neurotoxin, and uh, we're familiar with the adverse uh, consequences of elevated lead levels. Phthalates are found in fragrances and body lotions. And these have been shown to increase the risk of breast and prostate cancer, decrease fertility and sperm count. They've been implicated in uh, obesity, thyroid dysfunction through their endocrine disruption uh, behaviors. So, and there are many more. So we will do an in-depth review of uh, products and healthier recommendations for our patients. The role of nutrition in skin health. Nutrition plays an important role in maintaining healthy skin, obviously, just like the hormone balance does, just like nutraceutical supplementation. But skin cells receive the majority of their nutrition from the bloodstream and not from, obviously, topical application. And what we feed the skin is just as important as what we apply topically. And if we, as anti-aging physicians, are doing our job with nutrition, exercise, education about toxic exposure, uh, and hormone balancing. Our patients are going to have far healthier skin because they will have, um, at a cellular level, they will have the nutrients and uh, hormones and cytokines they need to maintain a healthy skin. Nutraceuticals and cosmeceuticals for skin conditions. Um, We'll review all of the different uh, botanicals and natural ingredients that are currently being used in the um, in skincare products, the scientific evidence to support recommendations or to support advising avoidance of a particular product, and uh, so that we can advise our products with evidence-based uh, information. During the course, we will review all of the different conditions and treatments, as I recommend, as I mentioned. We will also have laser and light treatment for the various conditions with protocols, and we'll do demonstrations for many of the conditions, such as acne, actinic keratosis, oncomycosis, scars, stretch marks, hyperpigmentation, rosacea, and photoaging. 
We use chemical peels to treat melasma, acne, acne scars, and large pores. We will also have an interactive lab that will teach you the skills of dermoscopy, biopsy, cryosurgery, electrosurgery, and surgical closures. Dermoscopy, for those of you who are not aware, is a non-invasive method employing um, magnification and polarized and non and polarized light, and it is um, to I, more clearly elucidate and identify structures so that hopefully skin cancers can be identified as suspicious prior to biopsy and uh, we can refine our techniques. Biopsy can be accomplished in many different ways and I'm certain that many of you are already skilled in biopsy and performing biopsy, but for those of you who are not, we will review tangential biopsies, shave biopsies, punch biopsies, incisional biopsies, and excisional biopsies and give you practical experience in performing these. And this is critical if you're going to offer any treatment that will alter the appearance of a lesion at the skin surface because, as you know, we um, diagnose and treat and follow our patients by the appearance uh, of a suspicious lesion that may change over time. We will also gain experience with electrosurgery to destroy benign and malignant lesions, uh, to control bleeding if you are doing any surgical procedures, and to show you how to do excision of um, little moles, benign lesions, tissue tags. And electrosurgery modalities uh, will show electrodesiccation, fulguration, coagulation, and electrosection. Cryosurgery is used for the treatment of benign and pigmented lesions, and uh, we will also demonstrate the proper use of cryosurgery. It can be helpful or it can be uh, used improperly to create hypopigmented scarring. And the mechanism of action is heat transfer, cell injury, and inflammation. We will gain experience in the different types of surgical closures. And I know that we all learned this in medical school, but it may have been a few years. And if you're not currently doing these things or have not done them in years, um, we can go through proper technique and practice so that you can feel confident and comfortable in doing perhaps excisional or incisional biopsies. So how do you get started? And get started by coming to our module in April at uh, the Gaylord at April 11th through 13th and spend this time with us. And this is designed exclusively for anti-aging physicians because it does incorporate all of the other uh, skills and knowledge that you have with your, um, you know, with our other training programs. We have an expert faculty, including Patrick Bitters, um, who uh, was involved in the uh, invention of intense pulse light, and just very recently uh, published an article on how light interacts with skin to, to uh, cause different cell expression to a more youthful level. Shino Bay Aguilera. Um, who is a renowned dermatologist who has done quite a bit of research in the use of Sculptra. Paul Rose, who is a very well-known physician who has published and researched in the areas of hair restoration. Miriam Cassell, one of our aesthetic fellows, who is a dermatology, dermatologist in practice. Uh, Dr. Baker, who is on our aesthetic faculty and then myself and Dr. Gail Humble, who did uh, all of the original research for Sculptra and is currently has a very active practice in California. So we have a balanced evidence-based curriculum and objective. We want to understand the function and physiology of the skin as an organ. Uh, the effect of hormones display proficiency on conducting a dermatologic consultation and exam become familiar with the different dermatologic, diagnostic, and 
uh, testing and common diagnostic tests, and then discuss the etiology and the common features for conditions and the various treatments with, and you will, you will be able to do the treatments uh, as you leave the module. We'll master the skills necessary for successful dermoscopy, electrosurgery, cryosurgery, and advanced suturing, and use uh, closing techniques in clinical dermatology. Review common nail problems and their treatments, including the laser treatments of oncomycosis, and possess a working knowledge of the surgical management of melanoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and actinic keratosis. Characterize different types of acne and the appropriate treatments for the different types. Understand the problems of hair loss and the appropriate investigations to get an accurate diagnosis and treatment for your patient. Recognize the clinical features and common uh, presentations of different infections, including bacterial, viral, fungal, and uh, infections that are associated with a dermatologic presentation. And then we'll review the um, clinical, the dermatologic presentations of the various connective tissue diseases and look at this from an anti-aging perspective. Incorporate the use of botanicals and other topical ingredients into the treatments uh, that for these conditions. Treat actinic keratosis with photodynamic therapy and learn the benefits of incorporating cosmetic dermatology procedures into your anti-aging practice. Explore the process of wound healing, investigate the effects of toxins on the skin, and discuss the effects of diet and different supplementations on skin health because, again, healthy skin is beautiful skin. I would also like to invite you or encourage you to uh, join us in our aesthetic fellowship. And I would like to introduce uh, Janet Daher, who is the Director of Education, to review the aesthetic fellowship content and reasons why you would want to have aesthetic procedures in your practice. Thank you, Dr. McQuillan. Um, good evening, everyone. I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy evening to join us for um, a preview of this informative module. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, the Aesthetic Fellowship has been in existence for a number of years, and it was created to establish the best practice standards in aesthetic medicine. Our basic fellowship consists of seven modules, three didactic modules, which are available online, which means we can offer you 24-7 learning without having to travel, and then four hands-on clinical modules, which are located at our um, state-of-the-art aesthetic center in South Florida. And um, I'm going to very briefly go through what all of those are. Um, basically, Module 1, 2, and 3, again, are the didactic. And this is a complete overview in, in great detail of both what is being used here in the U.S. as well as abroad in terms of advanced facial sculpting and contouring with botulinum toxinate and dermal fillers, aesthetic laser and light, chemical peels, and all the cosmeceutical ingredients that we know work today on skin for rejuvenative purposes aesthetic venous treatments and body contouring techniques, and all of that goes right from the surface of the skin into surgical considerations. And then the hands-on clinical modules in which you will spend time seeing patients, treating patients, and learning how to do consultations, and it's very interactive. You spend your time with us at the clinic seeing patients. Very little treating. talking. You're going to do a lot of work. <clears throat> And those, very briefly, we have, um, we have our basic Botox and filler course. We have our beginner aesthetic laser and light course. We have a two-day course in chemical peels and sclerotherapy. And then we also have um, our body contouring technique course in which you'll get to see a variety of different treatments in terms of skin tightening, cellulite, and fat removal. We also do have an advanced series. Some of you may already be doing these procedures in your offices of the basic nature and may want to expand a little bit into something more um, involved. Our advanced cosmetic and therapeutic uses of Botox and filler training really focus on full facial treatment using Botox and filler and full volumization uh, using some of the more semi-permanent products like um, Sculptra. We do talk a little bit about fat and all of those importance and also a little bit of stem cell and PRP and how that incorporates 
good and bad, into some of those treatments. Um, the advanced laser and light technique really takes your laser treatments to an, an escalated level in that we're going to combine treatments. We're going to combine intense resurfacing with pigment treatments and different things to really um, have a very intense rejuvenation on the skin, uh, which patients really love. The advanced venous treatments uh, practical course does uh, encompass an ambulatory phlebectomy and endovenous laser ablation. We also have a very special program, which is a um, comprehensive body sculpture program, which is a preceptorship, almost a mini fellowship, if you will, in which you will um, not only spend time at our clinic doing those procedures and learning how to do body sculpting, but we also send someone who is very skilled to your clinic to also do cases with you at your, at your home office. Um, newer module just added was hair transplantation. In that course, again, this is a clinical course. It is a companion to the module we just uh, is going to be available online very shortly that we just filmed in December about hair uh, restoration techniques in which we talk about everything from medical treatment all the way to surgical. We will do all both methods of uh, hair restoration, including, which encompasses strip removal as well as the follicular unit extraction techniques. We also do offer um, autologous fat transfer for facial as well as breast and gluteal areas. And I think that's the whole fellowship as of right now, except for the two modules that we are going to be adding this year. And the first one is what you came to hear about tonight, and that was the Dermatology for the Anti-Aging Physician in Orlando. And then in Vegas, we will be premiering a new module, which is Ethnic Skin and Cosmetic Medicine, in which we will go into depth about different things about ethnic skin and how to treat those conditions. From a worldwide perspective, there are and, and this is not just um, limited to facial aspects. This will encompass the body as well. There's a lot of different um, norms and ideals of beauty that vary greatly amongst uh, as you go across different cultures and through the globe. So it's really important for you to understand how that all translates into beauty for that particular patient. Um, I think most of you get an idea of why aesthetic procedures are um, important to your patients. Uh, for you, it's very simple to integrate into your practice. These procedures are performed on a cash basis, which means you get paid today. You don't have to argue with insurance companies that spend a lot of money, time and effort getting that money retrieved. There is a high patient satisfaction associated with the procedures, and patients are seeking them out. Um, at this level, with most of you doing hormone replacement, your model really should service all the conditions that relate to the face, body, and inner self. Uh, as your patients are going through hormone replacement and are happy with how they feel on the inside, they want that envelope to match. And if you're not able to do that, they're going to probably seek someone who can. So they've already trusted you, they've made a commitment to you, and um, it's in your uh, benefit to try to take them to that next step. I believe... Great. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up for the evening. Um, folks, if you do have any follow-up questions for A4M or Dr. McQuillan, you can email uh, info at A4M.com or you can email aestheticTraining at Mac.com. You can call A4M at 888-997-0112 or you can also call Dr. McQuillan at 800-420. 2689 and you can learn more all about these modules. Our educational advisors are available to answer any questions that you have, anything that they can't answer, you'll get an answer to right away immediately. So folks, thank you again for logging in. We'll, we'll have this uh, module recorded and we'll be putting it online for you as well. So Dr. McQuillan, thank you. Janet, thank you so much. You, we appreciate Daniel. it. And thank we'll you. Be, thank you. And we'll be in touch with everybody soon. Take care and have a great night.